This is an amazing article on Out of Mind. I'll leave a link below for you for this. Having to do with, uh, okay, uh, of course, modern technology and our health. Los Alamos research explains how terahertz waves tear apart our DNA, posted, posted yesterday. Los Alamos research explains how terahertz waves tear apart our DNA. This is by Arjun Walia on Out of Mind 2. In brief, the facts, a model of the way the THS waves interact with DNA explains how DNA damage may occur and why evidence has been so hard to gather. This is simply a model. It's not experimental, but it does raise cause for concern. We have to reflect on this. Why are so many technologies approved for use without conducting the appropriate safety test first? Studies have already shown cause for concern, yet too often the research goes ignored. Now what are terahertz waves? They're the radiation that fills the spot between microwaves and infrared waves on the electromagnetic spectrum, so you can understand how dangerous all these are. These waves can pass through non-conducting materials like clothes, brick, wood, paper, etc. As a result, they can pass, they can be utilized without cameras to look inside an enclosed structure or even sealed envelopes into living rooms into order to frisk people at a distance. It's not just terahertz waves, it's multiple sources of electromagnetic radiation. In the past, there were no artificial sources of electromagnetic radiation and now we're bombarded with them. Cell phones, Wi-Fi, 5G, and numerous other sources are all heavily present in our environment, and the corporations putting out this technology have not done any appropriate safety testing. The studies done, the studies have, uh, that have emerged about this subject are eye-opening and very concerning. The statement below emphasizes my point, which comes from Dr. Sharon Goldberg, an internal medicine physician. Dr. Goldberg announced this at Michigan's 5G small cell tower legislation hearing and you can watch it here there's a link below i'll leave for you now wireless radiation has biological effects period this is no longer a subject for debate when you look at pud pubmed and the peer-reviewed literature these effects are seen in all life forms from plants animals insects microbes and even in humans in humans we have clear evidence of cancer now there is no question we have evidence of DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of congestive heart failure, neuropsychiatric effects. Dr. Martin Blank, PhD from the Department of Physiology and Cellular Biophysics at Columbia University, is one of the leading experts in this area of study, he explains, putting it bluntly, EMF waves are damaging the living cells in our bodies and killing many of us prematurely. And there's a source there, you can read that too. There are thousands of peer-reviewed studies on the subject and hundreds of scientists have been petitioning the United Nations to pay attention. The problem is the industry and how we've taken over medical science. Well, there's another video I'd like to do about how the fact that Big Pharma has taken over the United Nations anyway, let alone Congress. But anyway, all going back to this, the problem is the industry and how they've taken over medical science. Information about harmful technological products that make a very small group of people billions of dollars every year is somehow brushed under the rug. Corporate control over science and government health regulators like the FDA and the CDC is completely out of control. So in this article he says, I'd like to focus on a research conducted by Borian S. Alexandrov et al., at the Center for Nonlinear Studies in Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico. It reveals that these terahertz waves could, quote, are you ready for this? I hope you're sitting down. They're ready to unzip double-stranded DNA, creating bubbles that could significantly interfere with processes such as gene expression and DNA replication. That's it. You're dead. If that doesn't happen, your cells just die. That's my comment. But anyway, this is concerning because terahertz waves are used, as previously mentioned, to peer through things. Airport scanners are a perfect example. That does not mean that airport scanners can rip apart DNA, but it does suggest we need further testing on these instruments. 
These terahertz waves are absorbed and emitted and can also be used to determine the chemical composition of a material. Even though they don't travel far inside the body, there is hope that the waves can be used to spot tumors near the surface of the skin, the author of the study states. Well, you know, if you don't want to go through those uh, airport mach scanning machines, you can always opt out and you have, you'll be patted down. That's what I'm going to be doing from now on. Now, he says, then, he then asks the question, but what of health effects of terahertz waves? At first glance, it's easy to dismiss any notion that they can be damaging. Terahertz photons are not energetic enough to break chemical bonds or ionize items or molecules. The chief reasons why higher energy photons, such as X-rays and UV rays, are so bad for us. But could there be another mechanism at work? Well, apparently the evidence that terahertz radiation, which is different from the wireless and other EMF radiation that's put out by multiple devices, damages biological systems is mixed. Alexandrov outlines how some studies reported significant damage while others showed none. This is concerning regardless of how many studies have shown no DNA damage. The fact is that there are studies that do show damage even if only one study proved that there could be a DNA damage, it's confusing as to why this technology would be approved. Alexandrov and his team created a model to investigate how the fields interact with double-stranded DNA. And what they found was remarkable. They say that although the forces generated are tiny, resonance effects allow TNZ, THZ waves to unzip double-stranded DNA, create bubbles in the double strand that could significantly interfere with processes such as gene expression and DNA replication. And that's a jaw-dropping conclusion. It's important to note that this particular study was a model. It was not actually experimental. However, the team still presented enough information to suggest this technology could be dangerous to our health, especially given the hazardous biological effects of other waves on the electromagnetic spectrum. This should be set, this should set the CAT scan among the pigeons. Of course, terahertz waves are a natural part of the environment, just like visible and infrared light. But a new generation of cameras are set to appear that not only record terahertz waves, but also bombard us with them. And if our exposure is set to increase, the question that urgently needs answering is what level of terahertz exposure is safe? The last point made in the quote above is important to note. We've never been bombarded this much. Our exposure has never been so high. North America also seems to be running behind as multiple countries have completely banned Wi-Fi technology and cell phones in nursing homes, elementary schools because of the dangerous effects these technologies can have on our health. It's concerning that we are approving technology that use these types of waves when one of the only studies on this subject outlines how, quote, research in this field has, not, has only just begun, both at home and abroad. In this paper, research progress with respect to terahertz radiation includes its biological effects, mechanisms, and methods of protection will be reviewed. That paper goes on to emphasize that although many biological effects are unknown, tremendous advances in medical technology could come from their use. This would not be the first time we've seen potentially dangerous technologies being used in the healthcare system, such as mammograms. And by the, by the way, uh, they have been found to be causing cancer on women. Now, who knows? I guess we will have to wait and see until more research emerges. And at the end of the day, a lot of technology and pharmaceuticals we use have not gone through appropriate safety testing. And so we may be seeing the same thing here. So if you want to see some of the science, the best place to start your research is with Environmental Health Trust. And you can f fully access this particular study here. And you can again find the, the, the link to that. And the takeaway, the conclusion is this. Although it's unclear what will happen here, there is still so much electromagnetic radiation in our environment that it's important to protect yourself. There are many things you can do to combat electromagnetic radiation. You can have a wired internet connection, unplug all of your devices before you sleep, purchase EMF protective clothing, and even paint your walls with EMF protective paint. Oh, I didn't even know that. You can live a healthy lifestyle, but I believe 
the mind-body connection is so strong that anything can be mitigated through the deepest levels of healing. So I'll leave the link below for you for this. This is from Collective Evolution and it's on Out of Mind. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you. Thank you.